Today, I am taking up the topic DNA fingerprinting. It is also known as DNA typing or genetic fingerprinting. It is the latest technology used in solving paternity problems and also a number of medical legal cases. It also establishes relationship between different persons. This technology was developed by Alec Jeffries of Lister University, UK in the year 1961. Then, coming to the DNA, we have got billions of cells in our body and each cell has the full complement of DNA. The full complement of DNA. Then, 99.9% .9 of DNA in all the human beings is identical. That means the base pair sequence is similar in 99.9% of DNA in all the human beings. Variation occurs only in about 0.1%. And that variation is used in DNA finger or that variation is taken advantage of using in DNA fingerprinting. Then, the base pair sequence is not identical in any two human beings except the identical twins. Who are the identical twins? They are also known as monozygotic twins. They develop from the same DNA because they develop from the same zygote. When the zygote undergoes first cleavage, two blastomeres are formed. Usually they remain attached, but sometimes the two blastomeres get separated. As the development is non determinate type in human beings, each blastomere develops into a complete individual. That's why two Babies are born from the same zygote. Such twins are known as monozygotic twins or identical twins and their DNA is almost identical because they come from the same zygote. Then, you have studied about alleles. What are alleles? Alleles are the genes occupying the same locus on the homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes means similar chromosomes. So, at the same position of homologous chromosomes, if we find different genes, it is called, they are called alleles. See, Mendel used in his experiments one tall plant and one short plant. That means, in one plant, the genes are for tallness, in another plant, they are for shortness. That means, there is a variation in the expression of genes. That means, the two genes are different. Sometimes, there may be more than two genes. We take blood groups. Three genes contribute for blood groups. So, when more than two alleles are present, we call them as multiple alleles. Multiple alleles. When a change occurs in a single base pair of DNA, it leads to polymorphism and this type of polymorphism is known as single nucleotide polymorphism or SNP. So when only, when a change occurs in only one base pair, it is known as single nucleotide polymorphism and you have studied one of the best examples. Sickle cell anemia. In the case of sickle cell anemia, what happens? The circular or disc like RBC under low oxygen tension lose their shape and acquire a sickle shape. That is called sickle cell anemia. It is a recessive <coughs> disorder. 
inherited by autosomes. So it is a recessive autosomal disorder. In the case of sickle cell anemia, what happens? Coming to the hemoglobin, hemoglobin is made of two <coughs> polypeptides. One is alpha chain, another one is beta chain. In the normal, in the normal persons, in the sixth position of the beta chain, there is one amino acid known as glutamic acid. So in the normal persons, in the sixth position of a beta chain, glutamic acid is present. But due to one mutation, what happens? The glutamic acid is changed into valine in the sixth place because of a single mutation, glutamic acid is replaced by valine. And this results in sickle cell anemia. So there is about uh, SNPs. Then, and that term we have to remember, or the FNP, that means restriction fragment length polymorphisms, pronounced as reflex. What is the meaning of this? Restriction fragment. What are restriction fragments? We know that there are one class of enzymes known as restriction endonucleases that identify a particular base sequence known as palindrome sequence. So they identify a palindrome sequence and make a cut in that one. Now you can ask what is palindrome? A palindrome is a sequence that reads the same in both the ways. So palindrome is a sequence that reads the same forwards and also backwards. I have here two words here, Malayalam. You read like this, same spelling. You read like this, same spelling. Similarly, madam, this way or this way, one and the same. They read the same in both the directions. In the DNA also, there are some segments. They read the same in both the directions. So this is the 5-3 direction for this, flag, this um, strand and this is the 5-3 direction for this strand. You take this strand. T T A A C G T T A A. Here also you find same pattern. T T A A C G T T A A. This is called the palindrome sequence. The restriction endonucleases identify this type of sequence and make a cut. For each type, for each type of palindrome sequence, there is a separate restriction endonuclease. That means. Each endonuclease, each type of endonuclease identifies a particular pattern of palindrome sequence and make a cut. That means when you use a restriction endonuclease, it makes cuts at all the places wherever this palindrome sequence appears. That means a DNA molecule is cut into, is cut into a number of fragments. If there are 20 palindrome sequences, it makes 20 cuts. Like that, when you use restriction endonuclease, a DNA segment is DNA molecule is cut into a number of fragments. And these fragments are not of equal length. Their length varies. The length of each fragment will be different. Why I will come to your point? Restriction fragment length polymorphisms. See the word length polymorphism. I have told you the restriction fragments are not of the same length. What is a restriction fragment? Come look here. So I have drawn one, a part of DNA here. I have identified two palindrome sequences, and here the restriction endonuclease makes a cut here and here. Also make it at other places, wherever we come across the sequence. As a result, what happened? These two cuts, we got a fragment of DNA. This is known as a restriction fragment. So here another restriction fragment is formed, then another restriction fragment like that. A number of fragments are formed, but the length of each fragment is different. It is a variable. So all the fragments produced by 
using the same restriction endonuclease are not identical but they are different in their length. That's why they are known as restriction fragment length polymorphisms because they differ in their length is called polymorphism. It's a very important point. So, RFLPs are characteristic to every individual. These reflips are characteristic to every individual. How? I will tell you here. Then VNTRS. That means variable number of tandem repeats. Tandem means side by side. So the repetition occurs one after one. What repetition occurs? Variable number. See here. I have drawn one sequence. A, A, T, T, C, C. The same sequence is written again, 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 like this. Six times I have written. That means the same sequence is repeating. Many times. This is one segment. This is the one segment, one segment like this. They are placed side by side. So the tandem repeats. So if the same sequence is repeated again and again, many times, it is known as a tandem repeats. Then how many repeats are here? The same sequence is repeated six times here. Here lies the important point. Suppose I have obtained one decision fragment from one person. In this one, there are 10 VNTRS. That means the repetition occurs, repetition of the same sequence occurs 10 times at a stake in a person. In another person, the same sequence appears in 20 times. In another person, 5 times. In another person, thousand times like that, no two persons, in no two persons, the sequence occur in the same number of times. It varies from person to person. So the number of repeats varies from person to person. That is very important in DNA fingerprinting. This is known as VNTRS, means variable number of tandem repeats. So these repeats varies. From person to person. Then, from where DNA is collected for DNA fingerprinting? It is generally collected from satellite DNA, which occurs in the form of three types micro satellites, mini satellites, and satellites. Microsatellites are smallest, where V and T are in these repeats, these repeats. They have a length of less than 10 base pairs. So these bases occur less than 10 in the microsatellites. So the sequence has less than 10 base pairs. In the mini satellites, each segment has 10 to 100 base pairs. That means each fragment, we can say fragment, this is one fragment, one fragment like this. Each one has 10 to 100 base pairs. In satellites, there are many tandem repeats, but the segments are short. So in this way, DNA is collected from satellites. And this satellite DNA is heterochromatin is in the form of heterochromatin it is localized in the form of heterochromatin you know that chromatin occurs in two forms euchromatin and heterochromatin euchromatin is the dissociated dna from its coils and it participates in transcription or protein synthesis heterochromatin is a highly coiled dna along with the proteins. It does not participate in protein synthesis. And this heterochromatin mostly occurs in the centromeres and also in telomeres. 
Telomere means at the end of the chromosome. Centromere is the place where the spindle fiber attaches to the chromosome. So in the centromeres and telomeres, we come across heterochromatin. Then in human beings, 10% of the entire DNA occurs in heterochromatin form. So from these points, what do you understand? This is important. V and TRS are important in genetic fingerprinting. Now let us see the procedure. The first point is, the procedure is to collect a DNA. From where the DNA is collected? It can be collected from various types of samples like blood, semen, saliva, hair roots, etc. Then after collecting the DNA, it is cloned by using PCR technology. PCR technology means polymer chain reaction. So through this technology, a single copy of DNA can be made into thousands or even to millions of copies. So in this way, DNA is amplified. Multiplication means amplification. So the next step is amplification of DNA, amplification of DNA by using PCR technology. Then, restriction digestion. Now, the restriction endonucleases are used to cut the chromosomes into or DNA molecules into small fragments according to their tandem liquids. Sorry, according to their palindrome sequence. According to their palindrome sequence. So now, DNA is subjected to restriction endonucleases and according to the palindrome sequence, the DNA molecule is cut into a number of pieces or segments. Then, these pieces are to be separated according to their size. One piece may have 10 repeats, another one may have 100, another may have 150 like that. So, as the number increases, the length of the fragment increases. Now, we have to divide the fragments, DNA fragments according to their length or size. For this, gel electrophoresis is employed. A process known as gel electrophoresis is applied. In this process, on a plate of glass, gel, a type of chemical is applied. On the gel plate, or at one end of the gel, on the gel plate, the DNA sample is placed. So this is the glass plate coated with agarose gel, agarose gel. It is whitish white in color. Then at one one on one end of the plate, we add DNA sample. DNA is negatively charged. So when you apply electricity, DNA molecules or DNA fragments move towards the positive end. So we place a DNA sample here and apply electricity. So DNA fragments, what they do? They travel towards the positive end. The smaller fragments travel longer distance and the heavier fragments travel lesser distance. In this way, after running this apparatus for a few hours, the DNA fragments get separated from this sample and they travel to various distances based upon their size or their length. In this way, the fragments are separated size-wise, but you can't see this with your naked eye. How they are visualized, we'll see afterwards. Then, after the separation of the fragments according to their size, denaturing of DNA is carried out. Denaturing means separation of the two strands of DNA. You know that DNA is a double helical structure. Now both the strands are separated. Separation of the strands is known as denaturing. Denaturing is carried out either by subjecting the DNA to heat or to alkali chemicals. So you, if you apply heat, the two strands get separated. DNA is an acid. So by using alkalis also, 
यू कैन सेपरेट बोथ द स्ट्रैंड ऑफ डीएनए आफ्टर सेपरेटिंग द डीएनए स्ट्रैंड द प्रोसेस कॉल्ड ब्लॉटिंग इज कैरिड आउट ब्लॉटिंग here what happens is this blotting technology was discovered by a person known as sadaran a scientist sadaran is the name of a scientist so it is known after him as sadaran blotting technology or sadaran blotting here what happens is on the agarose gel plate a nylon membrane is placed nylon membrane is placed on the agarose gel plate and on the nylon membrane paper napkins are placed paper napkins what they do they absorb water we use them to wipe our hands so if you place a nylon membrane on the the gel plate or the agro gel plate and place some paper napkins above the nylon membrane what happens the the paper napkins absorb water as the water moves upwards it also carries DNA molecules from agarose gel plate to the nylon membrane. In this way, the DNA fragments get separated from the agarose gel plate and they get attached to the under surface of nylon membrane. So, in this way, DNA fragments are transferred from agarose gel plate to the nylon membrane. Now, the nylon membrane is removed. and radiation probes are used now dna is single stranded a hybrid dna has to be made from this dna how it is made it is made by using probes which are radioactive scientists make small probes of single stranded dna small strands of single strand dna small length single strand dna which has incorporated radioactive elements either like carbon or nitrogen like that so the probes are radioactive in nature they are short they carry few nitrogen bases and these probes are various types one probe may be made with three bases a t c and there may be made with four t t c c like that in this way various types of probes are made and they are used to hybridize the single stranded dna so when you use probes what happens if there is a matching between the basis of or complementarity between the the single strand of dna and the probes the probes get attached to the dna strand so in this way the probes based upon the complementarity attaches to the dna strand in this way the dna single strand dna becomes a double stranded dna this is double stranded dna is called hybrid dna because one strand is non radioactive other strand the newly synthesized strand is radioactive so this is called hybrid dna so in this way hybrid dna is made then a photographic plate is placed on the nylon membrane carrying hybrid dna then what happens the radioactivity produces shadows on the photographic film these shadows are in the form of banding patterns are this called as banding pattern the dna produces a pattern known as banding pattern on the photographic film like this these bands we can see with the naked eye till now it was not possible to visualize the dna but now because of the images made on the photographic film we can find out banding pattern if the bands are thick it indicates that the fragment is very long if the banding is thin it indicates that the length of the fragment is less 
are short like this bands appear on the photographic plate so at the end of dna fingerprinting we get these patterns then how these patterns are used now let us say there is a dispute about the paternity paternity means father there will be no doubt about the mother sometimes cases arise about the doubt of the father in the medical legal cases suppose the banding pattern of the child is like this banding pattern of father is like this mother is like this children inherit dna from their parents they receive one set of chromosomes from father known as the paternal chromosomes one set of chromosomes from mother known as the maternal chromosomes so a child carries the dna of both the parents so in the child what happens banding patterns of both the parents appear not all but some of the banding patterns of both the parents match with the banding pattern of the child take here this is the banding pattern of father and this is seen in the child also this is the banding pattern of mother seen in the child also here banding pattern of the father and this is seen in the child like this one is seen here this is seen like this that means the child reveals the banding pattern of both the parents now let us come to this same parents child father and mother here are similar but in the child we see only the banding pattern of the mother father's banding pattern is not seen here it means the child did not inherit the dna from father so he cannot be the father of the child in this way the paternal disputes can be resolved by using dna fingerprinting technology it also helps in identifying missing children it also helps in finding out relationships between two groups of animals two species of animals it also helps in the study of lineage so in this way dna technology has many advantages and it is full proof thank you